I'm sure most of you are aware about the current chess controversy surrounding Hans Niemann, who allegedly cheated at the Sinkfield Cup against the final boss of chess himself, Magnus Carlsen. Now personally, I don't believe that he actually cheated, but what I do believe is that beating the world champion as black is naturally a little. So, in the spirit of all the memes, <laughs> I decided to write some code that lets me play as good, if not better, than a Grandmaster. How, you ask? Well, if you play a lot of online chess, you'd know that most chess websites have something called a chess engine built in that is able to calculate how good a given move is. Lucky for us, all of these chess engines are just straight up free to download for anyone. After I found this out, a thought crossed my mind. What if you could use a chess engine on a real life chessboard? I sat down and brainstormed a few ideas into a text file, and the one I settled on was computer vision. That is, pointing a camera at a chessboard and then pulling one of these. First of all, let me tell you the plan. I'll be coding this in Python using a computer vision library called OpenCV, and the golden rule is, I'm not allowed to manually enter my moves into the computer. All of the information about the board state must come through a camera of some kind. With that out of the way, let's get coding. Alright. The original plan was actually to use a webcam, but I realized that was a bad idea when I saw this. I've never seen it do that before. That's the weirdest part. So I decided on using my phone as a simple IP camera. I wrote some code that saves the first image to my PC and then displays it. Now we have our image, but we can't do much with it yet. Our biggest problem is locating the board itself. And because I want this to work on all kinds of boards, this is the only thing we're actually going to do manually. At startup, we have to click all the corners of the board so that we can crop the image appropriately. Then, we can make the image grayscale to save some memory and CPU time when running image processing, since we only have to deal with a single brightness value per pixel instead of three for RGB. And finally, we are going to denoise the image. A simple yet effective method is to use Gaussian blur, preserving most of the important information, but also getting rid of the randomly colored speckles. Now that we've implemented all the pre-filters, we somehow need to find which piece moved between two images. You might be thinking that's easy because you can do it with your brain. And to you, maybe it is. Let me show you what the computer has to deal with. My point is, computers don't really see, but they happen to be really good at math, so we can use that to our advantage. I had the idea to calculate the amount that each pixel has changed between frames and then map it to a grid. When represented as an image, this is the result. And, yeah, it's really getting there. But there's one little problem. Instead of using Gaussian Blur again, this time we're going to use a trick called binary thresholding. Put simply, pixels darker than a certain value are set to black, and pixels brighter than that same value are set to white. And what do you know? That more or less eliminates the noise. From here, move detection is only two steps away. First, we find the two tiles with the highest average pixel brightness, and secondly, to find the direction that the piece actually moved in, we just check which of the two is a legal move. We can now track pieces using only a camera. Gentlemen, it is time for the main event, the cheating. I decided Morse code is the best way to go about it, so I wrote in the ability for my code to talk to an Arduino. That Arduino will Morse the best move to the player of our choosing while doing nothing to help the opponent. I set up a board with the code playing the Sicilian defense, and here's what it looks like in action. Usually in a position like this, I would like to take control of the center using my pawns, but I accidentally forced Black into playing a gambit, which initially just looks like a free pawn. But then you realize Papa Stockfish doesn't give anything away for free. The computer plays knight c6, attacking the queen. I retreat, and what do you know? Suddenly, Black is more developed than White is. I have no choice but to reinforce my pawn with my knight. The computer plays e6 to open the bishop's diagonal. I finish developing my knight, and then the computer, expecting bishop b5, plays a4, after which I had this to say. I'm actually really pleased with these results. I mean, what, we're like, what, 12 moves in and it, it hasn't even encountered an error or anything. Um, the only error I've encountered so far is when I try to castle. I haven't accounted for that yet in the code. So, I'm pretty satisfied for now. In the case that you guys want to see more of this, uh, just leave a comment down below and I'll probably, like, I'll build up upon this, maybe release the source code as well, I'll polish it up a little bit, and for now, I'm satisfied. And I hope you are too.